Hello everyone, I want to do another video and this one will concern the disappearance of Joshua Guimond. This is a disappearance that Unfound covered very early in its existence and um, as you probably realize already, uh, doing these new videos I'm starting at the beginning of Unfound's existence and uh, we'll be going up until we get to much newer disappearances, much newer episodes uh, that we've covered maybe within the past year. I'm going back through all of Unfound's episodes and looking at them and seeing if your understanding could be increased if I were to add some video to Unfound, which as you know is only uh, an audio program. So this is the disappearance of Joshua Guimond. Uh, back then, uh, the guest was Patrick Marker, who to this day still does a blog regarding everything that went on or has gone on or is maybe still going on uh, at the St. John's University campus in Minnesota. Not the one that's uh, we think of maybe, uh, is it in Philadelphia or New York City that's in the Big East, but St. John's University that is in uh, Minnesota. So what you're looking at here is, first of all, up here, Metten Court. This is where Joshua was that night, and he was with friends, doing whatever, whatever college guys do, maybe playing cards, I, I don't know. But he was there with these other guys, and this is, I mean, right away in this disappearance, uh, things get somewhat cloudy. Uh, from story to story, it varies. Some thought he actually was going to be walking down to campus, way down here. Uh, this is St. Mar House, right down here at the bottom of the picture. Some people, some reports say that they thought, yeah, he was leaving and going back to campus. Others state that, stories state that he was just going to uh, the restroom in this dorm over here, and he would be back. Of course, he did not return. That alone has, I think, caused a lot of people to um, be very suspicious. If these friends of his can't even get that right, um, what else uh, are, can't they get right? Or could they be misleading people? I, I really don't know. Uh, I, I've read enough articles on disappearances to know that many facts get distorted, many facts are left out. So I, I'm not sure what to make of that. I, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be suspicious of that or not. But um, And we can't then, of course, ignore the other on top of everything else is that everything that was going on on the St. John's campus at the time uh, with allegations of sexual abuse, sexual molestation going back at least to the 1960s, if not 1950s, regarding priests and monks on this campus and how not just the college, the university, but people in the community labored to cover it up. And that's uh, when I talked to Patrick Marker during that episode. We also talked about that. And there is a belief out there that maybe Joshua disappeared because of that. Was He, he allegedly was going to be doing a report on it. Did he get in trouble for that? Did somebody not want him doing that? Lots of different theories on this. Um, in some ways, this is very similar to Jason Jolkowski's disappearance in that Joshua Guimond, for all intents and purposes, seemed to be a good kid, good guy, going to school, trying to do his best. No allegations that he was into drugs or anything else. On the other hand, uh, as has been written about, we talked about it, I believe, I have not listened to Patrick Marker's interview for a while, but it is now out there that Joshua was somewhat involved in a fake ID business, quote-unquote business, the manufacturing of them. I don't know if he was selling them, but he and other students seem to be involved in something where they were making IDs to make themselves look 21 when they weren't or for other people who weren't 21 so they could get into bars, get alcohol, etc. Uh, that doesn't, of course, shine very nicely on him. But once again, on the other hand, I think there are a lot of 
college kids even to this day. And of course, with the increase in technology and printer abilities, I'm sure you can make IDs that look very, 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 very real. Uh, even much better than when Joshua was in college and even going back to my time in the early 90s. So this might be something that's suspicious. It might not. There are allegations that somebody went into his computer and erased a lot of that information after he disappeared. Just a lot of things. I don't know what to make a sense of it. It seems like a lot of rumors without a lot of um, proof to back it up. But this is allegedly, if he was going back to his dorm, this is, this is uh, when you see circles, that means uh, walking. And if you ever see that with a straight, you know, a solid blue line, that means a car. But since we believe that Joshua would have been walking, this is the route he would have taken. He would have gone over here, down here, and this is where St. Mar House is. Maybe he would have gone over here and gone up to it or... Maybe down here, but this is where he was headed. And if you can see that, uh, it says that to walk it is 11 minutes and it's a half mile this direction. As the crow flies, of course, it's a lot closer, but you can't uh, go across the water. Some people may think maybe he went down to, the, to this river or lake, stream, creek, and tried to swim across. No proof of that. Uh, the fact is, is that Many different bodies of water in in this area, and I'll just zoom out here to see that there are a few, you know, way up here to the top of the screen, over here, over here, all this one that goes by the campus, this lake, um, Sagatagan, mm, I bet I just butchered that. Um, you can see there's quite a few bodies of water, and this is uh, Minnesota, known as the land of, what, a thousand lakes. Or a million lakes or something like that. So we shouldn't be surprised that you see bodies of water uh, in the area. But you also have to see here that a lot of uh, woods, forest around here as well. But searches were done in the area. Of course, nothing was found um, as, as well as they could do. The fact is, is... Uh, there were some good searches, unlike a lot of the other disappearances we've covered on Unfound, where maybe searches weren't uh, complete enough or there weren't enough people involved. Uh, I got the impression, I still continue to have the impression, that uh, quite a few people showed up. A lot of people knew about it, uh, looking to do uh, good work, and still nothing was found. He was not found. No trace of Joshua at all. Not his body or anything else, uh, his clothes, anything else that he owned. So what are we supposed to think about this? Uh, we have to remember that this isn't, uh, this may, may be a little, this is unlike Jesse, Jesse, uh, Jesse Ross's, which occurred in Chicago. I suppose somebody could imagine that uh, him leaving at two in the morning, maybe he was on the street and he did get abducted. Somebody drove by him, seeing him, maybe he was walking back to his hotel. Somebody forced him into a car. No proof of that, but you can at least theorize and see that might be possible. Whereas with Joshua's, uh, of course, it's a lot less uh, likely, given that where it is, the kind of town, small town, not as many people, um, except for the, all the sexual assaults and sexual molestations going on on the campus. I don't know how dangerous uh, of an area this really is. And so to believe that somebody just happened to be driving by here, seeing Josh and forcing him into a vehicle, I, I'm not. It's cer uh, certainly scientifically possible, but I don't know how probable it is. So I just wanted to uh, show you this. It's just that's it. It's just a half mile walk to his dorm. Uh, like I said, uh, some people believe that maybe he had a couple in him, couple. Uh, a couple drinks in him and showed up at one of these houses of one of these guys who is alleged to have molested both students and children in the community and Joshua confronted him and something happened. I've heard stories like that. Once again, nothing to back it up at all. Uh, maybe you've also heard that they brought dogs in and 
allegedly um, uh, detected his scent in some of the buildings. Well, the problem is we don't know maybe Joshua was there in those buildings. That doesn't mean he was there on the night that he disappeared. And that's what makes this uh, dogs, in my opinion, not uh, as trustworthy as as everybody makes them out to be. There's a lot of things, uh, I think, the reasons to doubt dogs many times. But this, that's the walk. This is just as simple uh, as it gets here. Um, let me just zoom out. As you can see, there's not many places to go. If he was walking somewhere looking to get away, I guess there's an interstate over here, some roads, uh, no allegations that... Uh, he was suicidal or wanted to get out of his life. Nothing like that. But uh, he was allegedly, well, he was at Metton Courthouse and then he allegedly left. And that was the last anybody saw of him. So I hope this map, uh, you can use this map, this video, along with the audio from the interview I did back in 2016. Put them together. Maybe that'll help you um, better understand Joshua's disappearance. Of course, you have not listened to Joshua's episode. Please go and do that right now on Podomatic, Stitcher, iTunes, and a variety of other podcast applications. And if you'd like to contribute to Unfound, go to patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast or paypal.me forward slash unfound podcast. Thank you for watching.